to this beautiful day and also to this historic occasion. It is a once-in-a-lifetime event. And we are very thankful that we are able to be here today dedicating this bridge in memory of Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable. We will start the program with the national anthem that is being sung by AAEP at Gallery 37, Center for the Arts. So will everyone please stand. Gallery 37. They work very hard and they enjoy what they are doing. At this time on the program, we would like to present Haroon Rashid. Haroon has really been a fantastic individual coming to Chicago from Boston, of all places, and realizing the importance of our being able to honor. John Baptiste Point du Sable. And it has been because of his hard work and his diligence that we are now here being able to rename and dedicate this bridge. Haroon. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just want to say and make it very brief that this is a proud, shining moment of a 10 year effort to produce something like this today. You know, many people here we have talked to over these 10 years for some way to help us make this happen. Many of these officials here have worked in their own ways over their own lifetime as advocates for Chicago to do something to remember the founder of Chicago. Great heroes among our leaders in Chicago. That front row was known for leaders people that we should be very proud of. In the middle of it is a woman that we should all be very proud of. She's advocate for, I don't know, I'm for the commemoration of the Sabo. So I don't want to take any more time for this. And there are so many people that I could think of to say thank you, thank you, thank you. But I will give this first praise to the God. Because God made this happen. He brought me here and I could not leave without doing this particular job. I'm just going to be honest with you. I can't figure it out. When I say, why are you here? What are you doing? I don't know what it is, why it is. But I know it's important to do this. That much I know. I know that that park down there that one day will be built, that we got the support from these two gentlemen here, the senator, as well as our congressman, early in the day, to see if they can find ways to make that happen. The bridge. I can't speak enough about uh, the Automatic Black Caucus and its chairman, Walter Burnett, been a soldier for this cause, helping us to make sure that this is remembering that our people are not forgotten and something like this 
will can be placed in the city of Chicago, the third largest city in America, in the way it should. So I don't want to take any more time. There's a lot that I could say, and there's a lot that I would say, but I'm going to leave it up to the people who come behind me. But before we do that, I would like to introduce, I'd like to bring, introduce the usher in. See, what's important, one of the things that we thought was very important, to include the characters of the Saba, first businessman, first religious spirit in the region, the first, you know, person who uh, had the, 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 the sense to marry outside himself. He married a Native American, and they were very helpful for each other. And to this day, that community is still helpful, the first people, to what we do in Chicago. They claim it just as much as anybody else. So in that spirit, we would like to bring the first people to usher in, in their own way, a brief drum ceremony to, for us to, for them to say in their own way through the drum. The drum represents the beat of the community. And I don't know if you noticed, I was instructed by Joe Clark, who is the chairman of the American Indian Center and our ally in this region for the American Indians. He gave us all tobacco. He told us to pray before we release that tobacco and spread it over the drums so that when the drummers are beating that drum, our prayers and our spirit is added into that. That being said, let's hear from a short, brief comment, I mean, not comment, but addition from the American Indians of the First People Drum Ceremony. Good morning. Good morning. Bonjour. Welcome. Oh, yeah. Greetings in the Ojibwe language. Um, I'm here to represent the first people of this land and remember uh, my brothers and sisters from the Potawatomi Nation, whose land this was and traveled and traded for thousands of years. Before we go too far, I do have a few words to say after the drum, but there are, we're going to do a welcome song and then there will be few second break and then what we'd like to do in memory of the Salvo's wife can be considered the first woman of Chicago then <laughs> uh, is an honor song so we would ask and, and I'll cue you that everybody rise this is for all women because they are the creators of life and in high esteem in our culture and our beliefs the men play this drum because it was a gift from the women women are the only ones that can create a heartbeat and in order to create balance in life they gave us this drum so that we can create that heartbeat but as you'll see they don't stand far away from us to make sure we do it right <laughs> <laughs> so let me introduce Salt Creek uh, from the American Indian Center community to share a few songs with us
have to rise now in honor of all these women. And they have been formally welcomed by our people with that last song.
Bob and Rona, thank you to the drum. Um, I just wanted to say a few more quick words. Um, on behalf of the American Indian Center of Chicago, the oldest urban Indian center in the country, right here in Chicago, um, we really appreciate all of the hard work the Friends of the Sabo have done to get to this point, and especially in remembering the First Nations people. There has been a tremendous effort put into uh, uh, keeping us involved and remembering history didn't start at this point, but is a big part of the continuation of people coming together, and we look forward to uh, many more successful uh, victories, such as today. Yeah, oh. Thank you, Joe. We really appreciated that drama ceremony. Now we will start in terms of our speakers, but before we do that, Father Flager, Please come and just say it. I'm just going to ask if we could begin in prayer. If everybody could please bow their heads. First of all, God, we thank you that delayed does not mean denied. We come this morning to honor the memory and the life of John Baptiste Point de Sabo. They, the first settler who we come to know throughout history as the founder of Chicago. We are quite sure that today DuSable looks down smiling as we gather here that this Haitian-born man of a French mariner and an African woman founded the city that gave birth to a man with a, with a mother who was part French and an African father who went on to become the first African-American president of the United States. We come to dedicate this bridge in his name and his honor to pray, O oh God, that we in disciples' memory may continue to be bridge builders between the great history of Chicago's origin to the future of generations yet unborn. We pray that we continue to be bridge builders between the north side and the south side, the west side and the east side, between every class and race and age and sect and faith of all those who call Chicago home. We thank God for every generation that has contributed to the building of this world-class city. And finally, we commit ourselves today in disciples' memory to continue to do all that we can through your power, God, to build the greatest city in America for the generations yet to come who will remember, live, and build the city DeSabo founded. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Right now we will have remarks on behalf of our friend, Governor Pat Quinn. Mary Roberts, who is his assistant, will come and read a letter. What a glorious day this is for this bridge dedication. I am very honored to be here and thankful as well to the friends of Usabo and Rashid in particular um, for making this all happen. And now for the letter. Greetings. As governor of the state of Illinois, I am pleased to send my warmest regards on the occasion of the renaming of the Michigan Avenue Bridge in the honor of Jean-Baptiste Dupont du Sable. This is certainly a fitting tribute to the founder of the city of Chicago. The Michigan Avenue Bridge, as one of the city's busiest, leads millions of tourists and Chicagoans across the bridge to DuSable's original home site and trading post. Although the name of Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable is inextricably intertwined with the history of this great city, this new honor ensures that his legacy will continue to be preserved. I commend the Friends of DuSable for your ongoing efforts to raise public awareness about DuSable's contributions to our city and to preserve this part of Illinois' history. On behalf of the people of Illinois, I offer my best wishes for an enjoyable and memorable event. Sincerely, Pat Quinn, Governor of the State of Illinois. We have so many friends here today that we are really proud that they took the time out to come and pay their respects. 
one longtime friend has been Senator Dick Durbin. Thank you to Peggy Montez. It is a great honor to be here today with uh, so many elected officials, Congressman Danny K. Davis and legislators and aldermen and those who are gathered here uh, for this great and historic occasion. Think if you can for a moment what it might have been like here 90 years ago. 90 years ago. On May 14, 1920, the Chicago Planning Commission Chairman, Charles Wacker, does the name sound familiar? Charles Wacker and Board of Local Improvements President Michael Faraday stood beside Mayor, Chicago Mayor William Hale, Big Bill Thompson, as he cut the ribbon to open this bridge. Mayor Thompson, unlike our mayor, was wearing a cowboy hat at the time. The crowd was huge. They pressed up against the ropes. Fireworks shot up in the sky. Planes flew overhead dropping literature on the crowd that had assembled. Boats in the river sounded their whistles, and a band played the Star Spangled Banner. It was a great day. The first official link on Michigan Avenue for the city of Chicago. Today's ceremony has a little less fanfare. But think about Jean Baptiste Pointe de Sable. He didn't come to Chicago with a lot of fanfare. De Sable and his wife Catherine, as we now have been told, a Native American, Potawatomi Indian, brought their family here in 1779 and built a small cabin not far from here. He traversed the river by canoe. He knew this location was perfect for a trading post. And in a few years, his small cabin on the river grew into a small community with a church, a school, and a store. His determination to make it through some pretty tough Chicago winters and harsh conditions of the 18th century laid the seeds for this great American city. It is appropriate that this important bridge is named after Dusable, a Haitian immigrant. Dusable reminds us that this city was founded and built by the hard work and sweat of immigrants from many places all over the world who came together to form this community and this great city. Chicago would not be what it is today if it weren't for Dusable's decision to settle here at the site of this bridge. He is the founder of this great city, and his work jumpstart a small trading post into a global metropolis. Thank you again for inviting me for this historic occasion. Justice has been done. Thank you, Senator Durbin. Another friend who has really been fighting with us for a long time, and we're not just interested in naming or renaming the bridge, but we are interested in actually materializing our dreams of having DuSable Park. And our friend, Congressman Danny K. Davis, has really been on the job in terms of making certain, Danny, that we can get some money. And you too, sir. <laughs> Danny Davis. much and of course Peggy Montez is talking about earmarks <laughs> and, and, and that kind of thing. But let me first of all thank you Peggy, uh, founder and president of the Bronzeville Children's Museum yeah. and one of the premier cultural historians and activists in America. Yeah, yeah. And I think we all need to know that. I also want to commend uh, Maroon Rashid, founder and president of the Friends of the Sabo. All of us glory when things happen, but someone has to make sure that they do happen. And the Friends of Dusavo have made sure that this event is taking place this morning. I also want to welcome Chicago State University, under the leadership of Dr. Wayne Watson. They come all the way from the other side of town. There are many colleges and universities in this area, but there's none like Chicago State. So, Dr. Wayne Watson, thank you. Downtown Chicago, where we are now, 
has many historical and cultural artifacts. As a matter of fact, it is one of the premier areas of America. I get an opportunity to represent it in Congress as its congressman. But I can tell you there is no artifact that will be more greatly observed and desired than this bridge, which today becomes the John Baptiste Point du Sabo Bridge on Michigan Avenue, which is a little different. It will be gateway to the Magnificent Mile, gateway to what we call the Gold Coast, and all of it will be taking place because DuSavo and his wife came here years ago. I must take to the floor of the house the first chance that I get and let people all over America know that the DuSavo Bridge is right here in our great city of Chicago. Uh, do we have a representative from Alderman, Alderman Riley's office here? We got the word that he could not attend. Well, we will move on. And the next person to come and speak is somebody who has been in the background in terms of making certain that the bridge naming would take place. And in his very quiet, unassuming way, and you wonder how does he get things moving, but he really does. And we would like to now hear from somebody who played a very important part in the renaming and the dedication of this bridge, and that is Alderman Walter Barnett. Thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of uh, my colleague, Brandon Rowley, I just want to thank him very much for all of the things that he have allowed for folks to do in his ward in relationship to DeSalvo. Uh, first, we, uh, earlier this year, we dedicated um, the uh, statue here, and he said it was okay to do the bridge. So, you know, in Chicago, you got to give the aldermen their respect because you can't get anything done without the aldermen at that ward. So let's give all the really appreciate him. But we also uh, like to thank the uh, Michigan Avenue Chamber uh, for everything they've done. Uh, the business community has been very uh, committed to supporting this and embraced us. So we want to thank the Michigan Avenue Association. And I, I'm chairman of the uh, City Council Black Caucus, which is all of the African American aldermen. And I want you to know uh, I don't do anything without talking to them. So they asked me to take the charge to make sure that we help to get this bridge named after DuSabo. Uh, so I want to thank them for allowing me to be their leader and thank them for their commitment in making sure that this bridge is named after DuSabo. And on another note, I'm also the chairman of Special Events and Cultural Affairs. <laughs> and I want to acknowledge uh, Lois Weisberg and all of the folks from Cultural Affairs. Uh, we want to thank them for everything that they've done in relationship to naming this bridge and all of the things that they do all over the city and making sure that culture is out there and that, every, that everyone is recognized throughout the city. This is a city of immigrants. I agree with Mayor Daly when he says that we don't want to have another Baruch on the river, that the city has come a long way. Dusabo is one who, uh, he just is a testament of that. Uh, to be a Haitian-born man, uh, half French, half Haitian, have an Indian wife, moved to Chicago, discover this area, but also embrace all of the immigrants to come to Chicago to trade with him. See, DuSabo was smart. He know that you can't grow by yourself. He know that you have to grow with everyone else. And he opened his arms to everyone uh, to come to the city of Chicago. So it's only fitting that the bridge be named after him 
that's in all of this commerce on Michigan Avenue. But I'd like to say to everyone that's involved, uh, I'd like to commend the uh, Friends of DuSavo uh, who uh, have always been pushing to make sure that DuSavo's name is recognized. Uh, many times we have uh, introduced ordinances in the city council. Some of them have passed and some of them just sat on the table. But we're coming a long way, so I want to thank Mayor Daly for this also, but also the Friends of DuSavo. But also I want to say to really recognize DuSavo. DuSavo was a trader in our community. He was a businessman. He was a man to bring people together. He was a man who also, I'm sure I could imagine in those times working with the Indians, he worked with them not knowing their language, but learning their language and learning how to do some of the things that they thought saw, that they were doing. He saw them trading, he saw some of the things that they were making, and he saw an opportunity to make some money off of it. But he also saw an opportunity with other people moving to the city. I think to really to really honor John Baptiste DuSabo, we have a lot of people in our neighborhood doing trades throughout the city of Chicago that may not be the right way of doing it. To really honor John Baptiste DuSabo is when we go out in our neighborhood and we teach those young men and those young women who's doing illegal trading in our society and we help them to learn how to trade the right way and let them know that an African-American man founded this city on trading, that what they're doing is in the right vein, but in the wrong way, that if they take and do what they're doing in the right way, that they can be successful like John Baptiste Dusabo. So I think if we truly want to honor him, we will go to our community and help all of those young people in our neighborhood learn how to trade, Learn how to sell all of the magnificent things that we have to sell in this city and learn how to make money. So I just want to say thank you all very much and I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Burnett. Now we will have a selection from the Gallery 37 Center for the Arts.
thank you for that delightful selection. It was very enjoyable. Now, because it's very important for us to recognize that not only did DuSable come to this area, but remember DuSable was of Haitian heritage, and so it is only fitting that we have the representative of the Haitian community, Mr. Leslie Condi, Consulate General of Haiti. Sí. 
of Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable has just become a little bit friendly. <laughs> a little bit friendly. Thank you very much. The flags, please. Thank you. We would now like to call Vicki Wilson, who is representing Richard, Mayor Richard M. Daly. afternoon everyone. I'm pleased to be here today representing Mayor Daly in the city of Chicago on this very important occasion. If the Sabo was with us, I'm sure he would say he was proud to see what his homestead has become. Just think, we're standing above the Chicago River, the same river the Sabo traveled, and on the same site of the trading post where he conducted some of the first business transactions this city experienced. Where nearly 250 years later, similar commercial activities continue along the magnificent mile. When he founded Chicago, DeSable saw the potential this city had and recognized that it could evolve into a city that continues to enrich the lives of our residents and visitors alike. Through the vision and commitment of Mayor Daley, other government officials, and those who will follow. Creating a city that has become an international crossroads for people all over the state, the nation, and the world. They drive our streets, stroll down our sidewalks, and traverse bridges like this one to go to work, attend schools, raise their families, and enjoy the beautiful scenery this city has to offer. And after today's dedication, the two landmarks we stand before, the DeSable home site in Pioneer Court, and I'm honored to say the DeSable Bridge will serve as two sites that acknowledge our city's rich heritage and cast a pathway to the bright future. Let them serve as a symbol for us to pursue our dreams and our ambitions. Let us thank Mayor Daly, the Aldermen, agencies and various supporters who have made this dedication possible. And I commit to you, as a member of the Chicago Department of Transportation, that the workers in our department will continue to safeguard this bridge to inspire future generations. Thank you. Most people do not know, but Mayor Richard M. Daly has played a very important part in terms of the park as well as the bridge. And he has given us all of his support. Being a Chicagoan, you understand how politics work? And if the mayor is not for it, you don't get it. But the mayor was for us, and we were able to get a lot of things. Right now, I would like to introduce to you a person who really gave us time, not only for this event, but for other events, and he also brought his magnificent group of students here. All the people dressed in the green jackets are from my alma mater, Chicago State University. So I would like to welcome Dr. Wayne Watson to give us a few words. We must pay, we must pay homage to our elders and those individuals who have fought hard to get us to where we are. And the last 10 years, Rashid, I know you have been involved in a battle to get this bridge named. I wanted my students from Chicago State not to 
see the culmination of a fight, the name of Bridge, but to see the, the continuation of a struggle, not only to get a park named after this album, but I really don't understand why Michigan Avenue is called Michigan. Yeah. You know, when the British were colonizing Jean Baptiste Dusabo, he was forming coalitions. He was forming coalitions with the Native Americans and other nationalities. Jean Point Baptiste Dusabo, he was literate. He was multilingual. You cannot say the word commerce, trade, and entrepreneurship without thinking about one of the first entrepreneurial in Chicago, which is Jean Baptiste Point du Sabo. The committee that fought for this bridge, we must put it in historical terms. In the late 1930s, there was another fight that took place. There was a group of ladies called the DuSabo Committee that fought to get DuSabo High School named, and they fought for two years, not 10 weeks, two years. It was a new high school. They named it the New Phillips in the interim. But it was because of their persistence that the board, Chicago Board of Education finally gave in to that continued battle and named it Jean John Baptiste Point Du Sable. So universities, high schools, elementary schools, we must, when we teach business, we must also understand one of the founders of the principles of business in Chicago was Jean Baptiste Point de Salvo. So with that, you know, Chicago State University and my wonderful students, we would like to acknowledge the accomplishments, but also acknowledge how much further we must go to get our park and to maybe get our avenue. Thank you.